ready to roll. Hello everybody and welcome back to our next journey on our adventure. Uh, we're sat here in an extremely wet but you're glad all went on from our last delivery of sugar to Wilnet transport. So I'm still a driver for hire and I've taken my next assignment of protective clothing. It's quite a short journey of 86 miles and we're going to the Reno Logistics. Timisora in Romania. So Will Net have given me a Renault Magnum 6x4 with a 480 horsepower engine and a 12 speed box. Not the best truck to drive but beggars can't be choosers. And once the delivery has been done and I've parked it up I'll get paid £2,157. Ooh big money. So if you've not already done so hit that subscribe button Hit the bell it's notification for any further publications and left. give me a thumbs up and leave a like. And also don't forget to check out my other playlist which is my American Truck Simulator with the new additional maps from coast to coast in Canada. And what we're going to do there is we're going to try and build a company up at normal speed, no 30 miles per hour challenges. I'm just going to build it up and you're going to join me on a journey from east to west coast or west to east coast whichever way and also don't forget to join me on my FSX journey which is my FS economy and this entails myself buying a plane and travelling from New Zealand where it was purchased back to my home base in Manchester and it takes us into many small regional airports, outback airports and some major hubs and just for your enjoyment just because i'm being lazy is a little bit of music which is from youtube's free music <laughs> I've decided to abuse their truck and opened up a couple of discoverables in Briograd, a recruitment agency and a Scania dealership. 
I'm glad I found this dealer as I prefer to drive scanners. I don't know why, but it's just I just find it a bit easier. I just find the truck a bit easier to, to handle. Left. Uh but I will purchase other vehicles, I will purchase Mercedes and don't like it echoes. Turn left. Yeah. But Mercs are alright. I used to drive a Merc van from where I used to work before. And it was good. It was really good on fuel economy. I made it my own. So, once we leave Piagrad, we'll make our slow progress into Romania. The whole journey, believe it or not, is on a single carriageway, crossing the border some 50 miles away. So I estimate our arrival time to be around midnight, in game time. Which means I'll have to try and park the truck in darkness and I don't, and I'm not the best at parking anyway through the day. So this is going to be a challenge. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. Keep left. We'll get it done. Then turn left. Could take us an hour, but we'll get it done. Turn left. Keep right, and then turn right. Turn right. Thank God that rain didn't last that long, so we're going to continue this journey in the dry. Now, if there's one thing that gets me about the rain on the game, and I don't know if you've noticed it either, but when it stops raining, it clears up virtually instantly. So when you're driving, it'd be more realistic if it dried up gradually and dry patches appeared where other vehicles have driven over. Um, you know, the heat off the tyres, it makes treads and grooves you know where where the tire marks have been and also there could be puddles in the roads also if you've noticed when you're driving a car or you ride a bike and it happens to you when it's been raining you always get a splash off the vehicle in front it comes up on your windscreen it comes up in your face and you know i think it's just a bit more realistic because as this is a simulator You'd want it to be as realistic as possible. Just some small improvements that could be made on the next update. That's just my theory on it. That's just my view on it. And that's what I'd like to see. So normally such a short job as this would take about 1 hour 45 minutes in game time. As it's only 86 miles and travelling at 56 miles per hour. It works out roughly 1 hour 45. That's going through town centre traffic and everything. But because I'm only travelling at 30 miles an hour, it'll take me around three hours in game time. And on single track roads like this, I can cause quite a tailback. Travelling at 30 miles an hour. The speed limit's 50, 56. They're all going to get uh, gridlock behind me. And, you know, every once in a while, you're going to get these donkey AI drivers that are going to try and overtake you in the most stupid of positions on bends up a hill they'll try and overtake you come into the brow of a hill they're just yeah the ai drivers annoy me get on my nerves but i think that in another five or six short haul journeys i should be not too far away from owning my own truck it'd be then a case of upgrading it putting lights on it and everything you know make, making it so it's got my personality on it and then we'll start expanding the company but at the time being i'm just enjoying driving all these, all these different trucks and all these different jobs that are coming to us or the theory is i could 
buy a truck, hire a driver, and continue doing this myself as a driver for hire. That sounds like a plan because I'll still be driving different trucks and you know it gets a bit monotonous and a bit boring driving the same truck all the time. Oh that's just that's just something that that sounds like it could be a plan. Oh I've got going to a bit about my gaming history. So I started gaming back in 1984. Uh, I'm showing my age though and the first console I had, the first machine I had, was an Amstrad 464 with a green screen and a, it had a tape deck connected to it. Cassettes. What are cassettes now? Ask ask anybody under the age of 20 what a cassette is and they'll not know. And I thought that were the bee's knees. I, I went out, I think it cost something. I think it cost me £200. In that, and that's back in 1984. So just imagine how much that would cost me now. If you're looking at about a thousand pound, God Almighty, when I think about it, and for how basic it was, now to, compared to what I have now, that's just it, it's crackers. It's crazy. <laughs> the first game that I ever played was 3D boxing. It was just like uh, square ring, some pixelated crowd in the background, two boxers. And you can only move up, down, left, right, and you trigger button, you threw your punches. That were it. Bonkers considering now what we have. But I also used Play Arkanoid, Beachhead 1 and 2, which was um, like a Second World War commando type game. Shoot them up. Dizzy, which was a little egg. It was like a platform game. And you used to uh, have to do little missions and and puzzles on it football manager first football manager when it was just like four pixels on a stick and a go on either end oh so basic absolutely basic player of the year and i played loads of others the only game i ever clocked was a karate beat em up called Yia kung fu and it was so easy to beat the opponent because you just had to trap them in one corner keep kicking and punching and that were it fight over when i was that i was a teenager then i loved that machine except for when the tape decks heads went and it started showing me cassettes up cassettes and all your save games had to be on cassette none of this it's in your hard drive now you had to load the game up you want to load your save game yes change tapes boom and then it took another three four minutes for load up absolutely unbelievable but then when, when my tape decks started going, I thought I'd had enough of that and I upgraded to a Commodore 64. Never had a Spectrum, didn't like them, never had one. And now I wish I had one because they're absolutely classic machines and the difference with this is that I could plug it into my colour television and wow, I was blown away then. Graphics were better, the sound and the gameplay were better. All the games were still on tape cassettes and there were that many that I used to have. They were all around the house, never in one place, they were in one room, they were in my bedroom, they were in my brother's bedroom, they were downstairs, everywhere. I used to get told off by my mum and dad all the time. But what the good thing was, is I was the only game player in the house, because I've got four brothers and because I was one of the only kids around there with a computer. Now, don't get me wrong, I weren't brought up posh. I, the estate that I was brought up on was quite a rough estate. Money were tight, as it was in them days, the mid 80s. Uh, there was a lot of unemployment. So I was always one of the popular ones because I had a computer. But then again, all the save games were on tapes. They had to be a C15 cassette that's a cassette that's 15 minutes of playtime and they're always more expensive because you used to get the C60s, C90s and that's what people used to record the music on but the C15s because there was that even though they were a lot smaller tape on there were, there were a lot less tape in them they were more expensive because you could hardly get hold of them I spent hundreds of hours playing football games and on the 64 my, my favourite was game called the double it were all a text-based game but to me it was so realistic because you had to you had real players in it of the era at that time and you had to manage your crowd control and estimate what attendance you think you were gonna get and it used to be 
if you were fighting for promotion up near the top of the league, the crowds were going to be bigger. And if you had a top of the table clash, it was virtually a sellout all the time. So, yeah, I was addicted to it. But the thing, the backdrop is, if you've got football manager nowadays, you can do a season in a day. But to complete a season on this, it used to take about a week. Like with football manager, how the how you get in-game highlights, even though that was all text-based, you still had in-game highlights and it all came up with those highlights and it it took ages. It took ages to complete a game. It must have took about 15 minutes. But I decided that once the newer consoles were coming out with disc, that was my next upgrade. Oh, the next machine I ever had was an Atari ST. And again, it brought game into a whole new level because it was a, I think it was a three and a quarter inch disc that went into the machine. And you could have multiple games on this disc. The games were a lot bigger, they were a lot more intense, um, graphically wise, sound wise, game playability. They were just, it was just, it took it to another level. Nowadays, it's still pretty basic, but going from where it was all pixelated graphics and text to having proper gameplay where you can actually make out features. But, like I say, looking back now, it's all still pretty basic. And I used I used to buy um, disc boxes, and you could fit. I think it I think it was something like 300 disc in one of these box, and I had two of them that were full. So when I bought a brand new game, it used to come in a cardboard box, and these cardboard boxes were something like an 8x10. So it weren't cassette size anymore. It was an 8x10 cardboard box. Had your instructions in there. On some of the games, you had to put a code in. So it had all the codes and that. If you didn't have those codes or you lost it, you were knackered game was no good so by this time I'd moved into my own place I was living in my own house so in one wardrobe all there was was cardboard boxes empty cardboard boxes with all these games that I'd purchased so much fun and I think in about 1991 when I played on on the uh, get ready ST, to turn right playing on the ST it introduced me to the world of simming and playing first person role-playing games, championship manager, right. sensible soccer, or, you know, the, the games were just unbelievable. And I I still love championship manager, football managers to this day, and it, it brought me into Formula One and all racing games. But then I met, I, I was friends with a few people at that time, and there was piracy going on, because it was easy to record the games, and I used to go to a club where we used to swap games and People had, you know, these external disk drives, what you could put the games onto and then put them back onto a blank disk. Ready to not turn right, left. not correct, but that's the way it was then. And I got friends with a few people and they had turn Commodore left. Amigas. But because I had a Commodore 64, and I loved that Commodore 64, my head got turned again. So I got a Commodore Amiga 500. Same again, disk based, save games on your disk. And I, I wish I still had some of them games, because they'd be worth an absolute fortune now. But my favourite my favourite game, apart from the Football Manager games, was a game called Wings. And this was a First World War based flying game, which put me into my flight simulators. So I've, I've spent many hours on this game, shooting down the Germans, strafing and doing bombing missions but I never Keep ever right. made it to the end of the game right. with the same with with the same pilot because you got so close to the end of the first turn world war right. and the game would just crash it couldn't be finished anyway I had one of them for about I had one for about six or seven years I think Commodore Amiga we placed numerous disk drives we placed numerous keys on the keyboard because they'd have a habit of popping off I'd, and then I flirted with Segas and Nintendos. That's when all the CDs came in, the compact disc, and Keep yeah, left. I flirted with them, and but then I wasn't left. that into them because I used to have a computer with a keyboard. And that's controversial, but that's just my opinion on it. And then I spent a couple of years doing the adult thing, and I grew up and had a couple of kids, and then that went messy to say the least and I ended up being a single bloke again and so I thought I'll get back Keep into left. my games but left. my mate at that time who I spent a lot of time with and turn he was left. exactly the same he was a gamer 
and he has no I still see him now and he must have ret he's got about six or seven retro consoles he's got all the new consoles his next edition's got to be a PS5 he's even got um, an arcade machine upstairs in his bedroom but he, is where he introduced ends. me to the Xbox the original Xbox the black box with a big X on it and controllers I'd always use joysticks or I'd never been used to a controller using the two thumbsticks and the four buttons I thought myself I'd, I'll never get used to this uh, but the best thing about it was you put your disc in the game's loaded instantly there was no waiting about and then all your save games were in the hard drive so there were no messing about with blank disc blank cassettes none of that and then the natural progression was to the 360 but I also had a PC at that time and I was still playing football manager and I think I had football manager 2010 oh no 2007 on my PC and I think I played about 70 seasons on it on the football manager and I spent them all with the same club but it wasn't I wasn't constantly on it I'd take a day off and then I'd go on to my Xbox and I'd go on to my PC and then back to Xbox and I flirted between them both and my favourite game on the 360 was Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion an RPG you run around you're killing things and you're doing missions and exploring through the wilderness and everything and I spent five years on that game and I was absolutely gutted because I never completed it and my Xbox died but I was a bit naive then and I didn't realise that I could have took the hard drive out of that Xbox and put it onto another Xbox and you know I was naive so when when it died it died everything went with it and I've got I've got an Xbox one now um, the missus has got an Xbox one the daughter's got an Xbox one she's playing Borderlands 3 at the minute but she's a lover of shoot 'em ups Destiny uh, Destiny 2 Borderlands she plays Fortnite the daughter plays Fortnite and she's she's good at it as well she really is good but the one thing that was apparent at that time was I missed my gaming PCs absolutely missed them and it was about what about 12 months ago I'd, I've got a couple of PCs I've got a couple of spare PCs and a mate of mine he came around and he said listen he said I've got this gaming PC it's quite old there's a decent graphics card in it he said it's water cooled and everything he said you can have it for 80 quid so I decided yeah all right fair enough and took it for 80 quid and I've never looked back and now I've got three monitors set up I've got my webcam set up I've got lighting I've got a microphone I'm not going back this is this is me I'm I'm staying with a PC and I'm gaming on a PC and I'm chatting to you talking about everything and I find I find it invigorating now because I'm posting videos and it's something that I never thought I'd do when I was a young whippersnapper teenager and I said in somebody's stream the other day could you just imagine if YouTube or Twitch or Mixer was around when we were kids and where we'd be now well that's my gaming history and I can't change that because I've always been into computers and I don't think I'll ever be out of computers or gaming and the only time I'll stop the day they put me in a box I, I could be 80 85 year old 90 year old and the, that's the day that I will stop gaming you'll just have to bear with me while I put this book into this parking bay I have to concentrate a little bit with it being at night time or you just bear with me I'll not be a few seconds and that's not a bad bit of parking that so we'll just go into the breakdown summary and for your perusal don't forget if you like what you've seen hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification for any further videos and give me a thumbs up it helps my channel out to get promoted and until next time i'll see you bye bye and happy trucking